Welcome back! If you're just joining the series, you may consider watching the setup video so you're ready to keep coding and learning. In this video, we will begin learning about how different HTML elements connect to form what is called semantic structure. Semantics refers to the most ideal selection of HTML tags to describe a particular type of content or content grouping. This will make more sense as we cover our examples. To begin this lesson, open our project in VS Code. If you are just joining us, you can download the starter project to catch up. See the link in the video description. In the terminal, type the start command, npm run start, to run the project, and then open the index.html file. When we left off from episode three, we had populated this file with essential content HTML tags as well as created a couple container div tags. First, let's consider the semantics of the heading tags. The best practice for both semantics as well as for search engines, also known as SEO, is to have one H1 per page. The H1 should describe the page contents and often matches the title tag that is found in the head. Now, in the overall page structure, the most valid structure is to have headings follow each other sequentially. This means an H3 should follow an H2, and so you should not jump from an H2 to an H4. Let's look in the browser again and focus on how the heading elements are automatically styled in descending size. It can be tempting to jump heading levels to simply achieve a different styled appearance. You will be ahead of the game if you understand now how that is not an ideal way to change a heading style. Instead, we will talk about handling that type of concern when we explore the style complement to HTML called CSS. Heading tags are the first element that begins to give your HTML page a sense of hierarchy. This hierarchy is useful both for algorithms that do content discovery, such as from search engines, as well as indicating to visitors of your site the various sections. Other tags that help indicate hierarchy are mostly used by algorithms in the browser and by content scanning technology. We added a couple div tags in the previous episode, and we saw that they didn't automatically provide any visual cues. In a similar way, there are a few more container tags that will not automatically look different, but provide more semantic structure. Let's copy our index file and rename the copy semantic layout HTML. Go to the browser and after localhost colon 3000 in the URL bar, add slash semantic dash layout HTML. It will look the same since we haven't changed any content. So back in our HTML file, let's clear out everything between the body tags and save. Next, we're going to do a skeleton structure of a page layout using the most semantic tags, going from top to bottom. Within the body, the first tag we'll add is header, appropriately named, right? Within this, let's add our single H1, and I'm going to use the text, my website. Following the header, let's add a main tag. This is intended to be used only once per HTML page and should wrap the main content that is serving the purpose of the page. Within main, we'll add an article, which is intended to wrap any content that can stand alone, such as a blog post, a news article, or a job posting. If this was a listing of, say, multiple blog posts, we could include one article per post. Within article, we will add an H2, and let's do the text an amazing blog post. Then we can add one paragraph, the P tag, with the content of your choosing. I like to drop in some tasty cupcake gypsum. We'll come back to this article and add more to create a full blog post layout in the next episode. After the closing main tag, we'll add a footer tag. From browsing the web, you've likely noticed that footers, or the ending of a page, hold various kinds of content. But for most websites, they include the copyright year and company name. So we'll start there. 
add another P tag with the copyright symbol, which we can easily add in HTML using the code ampersand copy semicolon, followed by the year 2020 at the present time, and the text Acme Company. Let's save and see what we've got in the browser. It may not look too exciting yet, but you're already a long way toward creating a semantic, usable web page. Stay tuned for the next video where we will build your first practical layout for a blog and learn more about structure and semantics. Be sure to subscribe. And if you're interested in early access to the final course videos and other future perks, support this project on Patreon. The link is in the video description.